Hey everyone, this is your best friend in programming, Code Ajit, and today our topic is paging in Blazor WebAssembly. So you've made a SPA and you've got a grid, you've got a table full of data, and you want to show that data in a paginated format. How are you going to do that? Let's see how that works in Blazor. We are going to start with a empty project. So let's go to create a new project and choose Blazor. Let's go for WebAssembly. We are not going to make a Blazor server app today. It's going to be a WebAssembly app again. And let's call it Blazor Paging. Click Next. And we will want an ASP.NET Core hosted because that is where our API is going to be. Click Create. Here is our new Blazor WebAssembly app and Microsoft actually gives you a pretty good bootstrap project, pretty good boilerplate code. It's got everything. There is a server-side application with data. There is even a controller with some data. And there are a lot of components, a number of components in the client-side application too. So let's give it a run. Here we are. It's a pretty good looking app. There's a counter and there is a little table and this is where we can apply paging. There are five rows over here and let's try and apply paging to this WebAssembly app. This data is being pulled from the API. So if you go into the project again, there is the server side app. There is the weather forecast controller and there is a method that says get. There are five rows being fetched from the database or the online source, whatever there is and these rows are being displayed here. Let's create a paging system where you've got a previous and next button and when you click on previous and next you get the next set of uh, records in the data. Let's see how that can work. Taking a look at this function we can see that it's there is a range of values being called. It's starting from the first row and is fetching five rows from the table or the data source and we can see that's that's what we got here. Let's change a little bit. Instead of starting from the first row, let's start from the sixth row and let's see what happens. As you can see, the data changed. So this is a perfect candidate for paging. We can have a paging button over here, back and next button or previous and next button, which would take us forwards or backwards in the data set. First thing we need to have previous and next buttons. So this should be in the fetch data component over here and we've got a table over here. So this should be the table where the data is present. Let's have a div and in that div, let's just create two input buttons. And let's style it up a little bit. Let's use some classes, bootstrap classes. And let's see how it looks. So here we are, we've got two buttons over here, previous and next. Okay, so first thing we need over here is a variable where we'll hold the current page number. So let's just call it, let's have an integer, let's call it current page. And let's set it to number one. So the first page is the number one when, it, when the software runs. Next, we have to pass the page number, whatever we've got here to the controller method that we have. So let's change this a little bit. First, let's make it clear that we are calling the weather forecast controller. And then we shall pass in this instance, the page number as a query string variable. So let it be curve page. And we are using string interpolation over here. So just need to put this dollar sign. And now using string interpolation, whatever is in the page number is being passed to the controller method. Now let's go to the controller method over here, get method. And we shall introduce a variable called page over here. And then instead of beginning from the sixth item right, right now, like we've got, let us put in the code that will begin from the paginated row number. So in this case, it would be a formula According to this formula, what we are doing is we are multiplying the page number by the page size. In this case, the page size is 5. So we're multiplying this by 5. Now, normally, I never do this. This is something that's called the magic number. 
and I never like magic number or literal values in my code usually what you want to do is you want to have a constant over here like this const int page size and use that but in this case I have just put in the number because it's a test program but when you do write production code I want you to make sure that you don't use magic numbers now coming back to the point the formula let's say the page number is 1 1 multiplied by 5 is 5 and then you subtract one value less than the page size so if the page size was 5 you will subtract 4 and then you will get 1 or the first page here let's say the page number was 2 so 2 into 5 10 then you subtract 4 you get the sixth row so you understand how this works coming back to the component we can see that the page data is being fetched in the on initialized async lifecycle event because we're gonna call this information again and again we need to move it out of this event so let's cut it and let's create a function called so show page and it's a async method so we are using await in any case if you're writing a blazor app or if you're writing a modern dotnet app you should always use async and await as much as possible so let's just create an async method and paste this so if everything is right it will still work all right that's working so on to the next step to move back and forth we need to have a way to increase and decrement or decrease the curve page number so let's just do that let's create two function the first one is next page and the next one is previous page or pref page so we've got two simple lines over here we are subtracting one from the current page and then we are showing whatever page is currently valid so need a little bit of checking over here curve page should never go below one so if is greater than or one only then this code will be processed otherwise we'll just not let anything happen so that's done next we have to fire these functions on the click of the button so we're going to use the at on click directive previous page function and let's put a little breakpoint to see if this is fired so the function is fired the breakpoint is hit and if we run it let's remove the breakpoint and go into the code let's run it and when we go to the page we will see that it's working just like that our paging is working and the data is changing this is happening because these are all being monitored these variables these functions are all being monitored by blazor this is what uh, spa is all about it's live coding you don't need to make any more calls then just have the components and variables over here in blazor and it handles everything for you but this is not quite what you expect from the entire paging experience you also want to see the page number that you're on and potentially even have some other pages that you can click on and go to so let's make that happen let's start by showing the current page over here so let's just introduce a span and in that span let's let's show the current page and if you go to the app yep we got the current page and what we want to do is we want to have the page numbers displayed over here and when you click on a page number it should go to that page so to do that we have to make the code a little more complicated first we need to have a function that will accept a page number right and go to that page so we're gonna introduce a new function over here protected async task and we're gonna accept a page number so I'm just gonna use I set curve page to I you can call the local variable whatever you want the argument whatever you want of course and then make another call to show page and then we gotta connect this function to an event so over here in this span let's have a function on click and on click we are gonna call this 
and we're gonna pass an argument we're gonna pass the page number now that creates a new problem because we earlier used function methods that have no that had no arguments but if you want to call a method with an argument you have to use a lambda function so we're gonna use a lambda over here and we're gonna pass car page so this will only take us to the current page it's not very helpful it's not gonna change the page at all so we need to modify the code a little more first we need to show the page numbers uh, that are a little behind and a little ahead of uh, the current page and to do that we got to use a loop so let's introduce a loop over here and it's a for loop and the for loop will be structured as current page minus some number so let's take two numbers let's show two numbers before and two numbers after the current page and so to do that page plus two this time and i plus plus so this will give us a for loop and inside the for loop we're gonna put our span in and then instead of uh, showing the current page over here what we're gonna do is show i let's check this okay so we got the pages over here but you can see there are it's going into negative and it's so crammed together so it needs to be improved a little bit let's introduce a couple of bootstrap classes let's use px2 which should give us a nice space yep that's working and then we don't want to show negative numbers if the page number is less than one we don't want to show it so we just gonna put in a qualifier let's put in an if if i is greater than zero and we're gonna put the span in here and if we go to the page yep we've got the page numbers only if they're greater than zero that's another little victory but the paging won't work yet because we are calling the show page function on the curve page variable nothing is changing over here so to make it change we need to introduce a variable that will change now there is a problem with a for each loop in blazor I've got a nice little int i variable over here if I put i over here it's not going to work the reason is blazor watches the variables you know all the time and the show page will always be set to the last value of i so what you need to do is you need to introduce a local variable so I'm gonna create a new variable and set it to i and in the body where I want to see the actual value of i at this point I'm gonna use the local variable j and then it's gonna work so let's let's see let's run it and see if it works okay so let's click on a number and as we can see it's changing and you can see there are two numbers before and two numbers after but let's make it a little better the current number should be bold right so let's make that happen now another if and if i equals to curve page let's set the style is called to bold so let's set font weight bold and i also noticed that in the actual app the mouse pointer was text you know it was the selector so you don't want that you want it to be looking like a pointer so we're going to change that to we're going to set the cursor to pointer and we're gonna introduce the style in here too. Let's run it again and see how it works. So here we are and the current page is now bold. So you can see it's bold and the, and the cursor is also now pointer. So it's looking pretty clean and this is a pretty rudimentary example of how paging works in Blazor but it's enough for you to create your own professional version. The code is all here and you can implement it easily in your Blazor components. I'm going to put this code in a GitHub repo and put the link in the description so you can see this actual code for yourself. You can play with it and you can use it in your own projects. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to create a lot of content about real world programming problems, things that you will face every day when you code and I'm going to fill these videos with tips and tricks on how to program properly. This is your best friend in programming, Kodajit, signing off.